Okay, today I'm going to be talking about something kind of off-topic for what I usually do. Today I'm going to talk about something called Far Red. Far Red's been interesting to me for about a year or so, after I learned about it. It's this strange sort of area on the spectrum. And far Red is about 700 to 800 nanometers. Now you'll get varying numbers, but that's a rough estimate, where the visibility of the light is fairly low, but not zero. Now this is a graph, or a couple of graphs, I guess, from a book on solar energy, interesting enough, but it's got a couple different response curves for different sensor types, including human eyeballs. As you can see, the visible range right there in blue. And at the end here, you see the curve hits the bottom right about there. That's about 750 nanometers. Now, beyond the visible spectrum is, of course, the infrared, which uh, there's infrared should really be divided up into three different categories. Infrared's a fairly wide area. But right at the end here, where the visible spectrum fades into the infrared and is called the far red, and that tail end of the visible spectrum, and just a little bit past it, is called the far red. Now this is a particularly interesting region of the spectrum because of what it does. And far red, it, since it's at the borderline, basically, between visible and infrared, it's a kind of transition zone in between the two. Because it's a transition zone, it has properties of both. What I mean by it has properties of both, well, it's visible and that it's visible, just not to that great of an extent, as you can see by its low response. The portion it surpassed 700 nanometers, the response is pretty low, but it's not zero. But it also has properties of infrared and that it will reflect off of different various materials in similar ways to how infrared reflects off of it. Now unfortunately I can't show you with this camera, because most cameras actually have a cutoff lens inside of them, a little piece of glass, I actually have one that I've removed from another camera you take one out, they'll typically be slightly bluish tinted. They typically cut off at about 700 nanometers, so I can't show you that tiny portion there. Not at least with this camera. But I do have one where I've removed the lens. As I was saying, it has uh, far red has properties of both visible and infrared. The near portion of the infrared. Any of you have ever seen video recordings from night vision cameras, specifically the ones based around uh, near-infrared illuminators, the 850 or 940 nanometer ones. You may have noticed that all the black fabrics actually appear bright white in those recordings. Well, there's an interesting thing about that. The dyes that they usually use to make blacks and fabrics actually have, will appear straight bright white and the infrared but to far red they're also bright since the human eye response to far red is not that great you don't see the effect much during regular lighting conditions okay so here you can actually see the reflection of that 100 watt incandescent bulb on the television it actually makes a decent diffraction grating, which is pretty funny. The spectrum of the bulb is split up there, as you can see, the blue all the way to the red. But in real life, there's actually more red. The red is actually longer than it's shown on camera. What I mean is the red portion of that spectrum there extends further than on camera. And that's because of that cutoff lens I was telling you about that's in the camera. If you get one of these lenses and look at yourself, the 
spectrum of an incandescent bulb. As soon as you put the lens in front of your eye, you'll see part of the, a lot of the red, a part of the spectrum from the bulb cut off. And this doesn't do that much to video, since the human eye's response to it is low, but it might have some minor noticeable effects, particularly those black fabrics that I'm telling you about that actually reflect far red pretty well. Some of you may have noticed that they actually look slightly reddish under bright daylight or bright incandescent lighting. The effect's not very big, because as you can see the response there is pretty low. But it is definitely there. And that's also the reason why the incandescent bulbs look a little bit different than the 2700K LED bulbs. It's because the LED bulbs, they don't include that far red portion. And I'll explain that why they don't in a, the second part of this. So since each camera comes with one of these little lenses inside of it, I can't show you far red with this camera because it'll be blocked by this piece of glass. So that means I'll have to use a different camera to show you. Taking out the lens is fairly easy for most cameras, but you do risk the, you do have the possibility of damaging the sensor on your camera. The reason why they put that little piece of glass in is because the sensitivity of silicon sensors to far red is far higher than human eyes. So the colors would appear quite distorted if they allowed that far red through. And since there's not really much they can do to only allow some of it through, they just have to block it. Okay, now this the quality of this recording is going to be pretty shit, but I don't want to risk my good camera by trying to remove the lens. As you can see, this hat appears to be white, and you can read the words YOLO SWAG written on the hat. Now, to any regular person, this hat is actually black, or black with a very slight reddish tint, because of the far red component, but with the lens removed, this camera is now seeing a ton of far red and infrared that is reflecting off of this black and it's causing the sensor to, to pick this up and make this look white. Here's the other camera. You see the black plastic is still black because what they use to make plastics black is still black to infrared. But the camera bag, which is supposed to be black, is now bright white. This is currently lit by an incandescent bulb. If this was lit by an LED bulb, this hat would still appear black because there'd be no infrared for the camera to pick up, or far red for that matter. Okay, now I'm completely illuminating the scene with only far red. Now, what you see on camera is actually what you see in real life in this case. Although, in real life, it's actually quite a bit dimmer. So this hat is it actually looks like this in real life. The particular type of light that this is illuminated with is 730 nanometer far red light. This is actually a homemade flashlight. Might be able to see it on camera. This is actually just a standard one of those aluminum case flashlights that normally has nine standard white LEDs in it, but I've removed those and replaced that with a three watt far red LED. This thing isn't intended to run for more than 10 minutes because otherwise the LED will start to overheat. I rep also replaced the battery pack with a 18500 lithium ion battery. That way it can handle the much higher current need of this LED. Now you can get some pretty cool effects with this. Here's that same camera bag. And it actually appears like that in real life. All the black appears red like that, or white on camera, but it appears red in real life. 
and use it for secret writing. So, for example, this writing is just regular Sharpie on black fabric. And this, will, this writing will only show up with far red. Now, you may be able to see it a slight bit if you're in if you're under really bright incandescent light because of the high amount of far red in that. But with the other light there, it kind of washes out the effect, so you'll only be able to see the slight reddish tint of the supposed to be black fabric. This will not show up under UV either. So this will only show up under far red lighting. Which can make it an interesting way of doing secret writing. Here's these same curtains by that incandescent bulb. You see they're actually quite a bit brighter. Normally they looked like a very dark red to black color, but now they're like a medium gray. Here's the magic gloves. And so these gloves appear black under regular lighting or a very dark shade of red. Except there's this weird one. It's got two different colors of fabric on it. The back fabric is a lot darker even under this far red. And it actually appears almost a pure black under it, uh, just about any light source. But the rest of it appears black with that very slight reddish tint we see from the far red. And this is just something that normally wouldn't show up on camera. Well, this glove doesn't have that mismatched fabric. On the back, we can see more secret writing there that's normally not visible because of the, there's not enough contrast difference between the black Sharpie and the incredibly dark red glove, as I like to call it. Here's another scene of far red. And this is another custom-made light. This is actually my 10 watt 730 nanometer illuminator. This one in real life is actually bright enough to read under even. It's not illuminating the rest of the room very much, although it's going to appear quite a bit on camera. Although, even though it's not il illuminating the rest of the room that much, it still is to some extent for human eyes. Another interesting thing about far red is it's interesting color. Now it may just sound like it's just boring old ordinary red like you see on a computer screen. But if you actually buy one of these for yourself, you'll see what I mean when I say it's the reddest red you'll ever see. It will make any red from any other LED other than another far red LED look slightly orangish by comparison. Your screen cannot display how red this red is. And that's what I mean when I say this is like the reddest red you'll ever see. And I just want to stress, this this word swag right here written on that glove, that's normally not visible under regular lighting conditions, that's not just visible on camera, that's visible in real life, but only under far red. Okay, now I'm back on the regular camera. Here's the flashlight under regular lighting. There's the 3 watt LED in there, 730 nanometer. And there's that piece of glass that's normally in every camera that filters out light above 700 nanometers. And I must point out, for those of you who think that this flashlight's not 730 nanometers for some reason, or that the portion that's seen by normal eyes is somehow under 730 nanometers. That if you put this lens in front of your eye and look at that flashlight, you won't see much of light, if any, coming out of that LED through that lens. But without it, you'll see those cool effects that I was talking about. Like the fabrics appearing red, even though they're normally nearly black under regular lighting. You'll also be able to see sharp black sharpie written on supposed to be black fabric. Because of the human's eyes' lo relatively low response to far red, it's not particularly useful for bulk illumination. 
but it is useful for novelty effects. And far red is responsible for tiny details that you normally don't get. If you're, when you're recording with a regular camera such as this, here's the camera bag. In real life, this does has a have a very slight reddish tint to it from that incandescent bulb there. But on the camera, it's just going to show up plain black. And if I was trying to use this camera to record that with the far red, you wouldn't be able to see anything. Although you, the you, you the person, would be able to see something if you happen to have one of these far red flashlights to view it. The camera wouldn't pick up anything. Not without some modification, at least. Now, given what I've just shown you, it should be pretty clear that it would be pretty stupid to classify far red as infrared, since far red is still visible to the human eye. But if you were trying to use far red as infrared, you'd run into some problems. If you were trying to use it for security, you'd run into the problem that the, that the room is still partially illuminated. But, this graph right here that shows a response to the far red isn't the one used by a certain International Illumination Committee, which I'll tell you about in part two.